Hi, on the woodpecker today, I'm making a small wooden box for the special laptop I made for the cottage. I really love my Raspberry Pi 400, but using my small monitor like this is really not ideal. So I'm going to make a laptop box for my Raspberry. For this, I go to the website boxes.py to find a box model that I could use. After entering the dimensions I want, I export this and import it in Aspire. There, I add the things I want to my box. I spread the cuts on several sheets. When I have everything, I can go to the shop and cut pieces of 3mm thick plywood. With those pieces, it's possible to start cutting on the CNC. In fact, uh, this is my first big project I cut with a laser on my CNC. There are a lot of cuts to make. This takes a lot of time. But the worst is that I only noticed after cutting some pieces that the offset the website gives is not right and I can't assemble the parts. And one piece moved during the cut, it's useless now. So I return to Aspire and fix the offset and come back to the CNC. I'm using the discarded pieces to cut the smaller ones. For the bigger one, I need to cut more plywood. But you can see that in some places, the tip of the nozzle is rubbing the plywood. This is because the plywood is not totally flat. This also causes me trouble. This is the final cut. I'm pointing to the spots the nozzle touched and burned. But if it was only this, whereas they're burned on the top, the laser didn't cut right through. I remove the pieces that I can. For the spots the laser didn't cut, I finish the job with the scroll saw. But I didn't have trouble on all the pieces. Most of them were okay. This is a dry fit of what my box will look like. The Raspberry Pi will go there and the monitor will go inside this hole. But that's when I realized that I forgot the hole for the monitor wires. I cut a hole for the wires. Since I don't want to damage the screen later, I send this right now. But when I put it in place, I noticed that the HDMI connector doesn't have enough space. I trace around it, so I know what to remove. Now it's possible to glue the screen in place. I only use a glue for this. Then it's possible to glue the box. I put one drop of glue on each finger and put everything together. Now I have to wait for the glue to dry. Then it's possible to glue the bottom part where the Raspberry Pi will rest. Then I clamp this again and wait for the glue to dry. I use the box with integrated hinges. I can see it's not sturdy enough for what I intend to use it for. One inch broke by itself. I need to do something better. So I cut a square piece of oak. Put it on my lathe and turn the pivot in the center. Then cut this in half. I also need to remove the hinge that didn't break before gluing the pieces I just turned. I use tape to hold the pieces in place before clamping them. While the glue dries, I can go back to the computer and design the other part of the hinge. 
Anka Deman de CNC. After, I glue them in place. I make sure to put glue only where it's needed and clamp this. When the glue is dry, it's possible to do the final sanding. The last thing to do is to wipe some linseed oil everywhere I can. Then I wait for the oil to dry. When it is, it's possible to hook everything up. And here is my Raspberry Pi laptop. In fact, this is for the cottage, so I can monitor the status of my charging system. If you intend to make a similar box, I suggest using a turn pivot like I did. Personally, I really like my wooden Raspberry Pi laptop. I like it so much that this inspired me to replace a 15-year-old PC that I use with my big TV, with another Raspberry Pi and a wooden case. Just like last time, I go back to boxes.py and find a suitable box for what I want. After entering the dimensions, I export it. Again, in Aspire, I add the cut and burn, this box will need. I spread this in several sheets. For this, I need more plywood. Then it's time to go back to the CNC. As you can see now, the plywood is screwed to the table on top of spacers. And I thought that the laptop cuts took a lot of time. <laughs> this one is even bigger and has hundreds of air holes. This takes forever, but I manage. Those are the cuts I made. Most of the pieces detached easily, but I don't know why I still have uncut spots at some places. The straight spots are pretty easy to fix. I use a knife to cut them. But just like the laptop, I use a scroll saw for the finger joints. Here, to protect the underside of the plywood, I use another scrap piece of plywood under the good one. I finish the job with a rasp. I feel very lucky that it's only a couple of spots that didn't cut because I have a lot of square holes and they're perfect. After that, it's possible to glue the case. I begin with the top, followed by the main box. Like last time, I put a drop of glue between the fingers and put each piece where they belong. Putting together a box with hundreds of finger joints is pretty rewarding. <laughs> Maybe you've done it yourself. And when every piece is in place, I put several clamps. And while the glue is drying, it's time to cut the interior hard drive separator. Cutting those four pieces with their hundreds of holes takes enough time, so the glue is now dry enough so I can glue this in place. When the glue is dry, my new case is finished. I need to send it. But before going any further, I tried the Raspberry Pi stack in place. And that's when I noticed that I put the hole on the wrong side. The holes are not at the same distance on each end. The power supply holes are perfect, but when I put one of the fans in place, I notice that I need to move the Raspberry Pi from the side. This means that the back hole mm, is not at the right place either. I made some correction files and returned to the CNC.
and with my new holes, everything fits perfectly. The last things to glue are the feet. When the glue is dry enough, just like last time, I wipe on some linseed oil. When the oil is dry, I can put everything inside my new case. Before bringing this inside the house, I try it. This turns on. But the most important thing is that the Raspberry Pi is booting. Now I can put the lid on and bring this inside. And no surprise, it's working. I'm pretty happy with my case. On the front, I have an SD card slot and two USB ports, all of which hook up to the Raspberry Pi. I really like my new case. There's enough space for all I wanted to put inside. Now you can make your own case for your Raspberry Pi. And I will come back soon for another episode of The Woodpecker.